Greetings and salutations, my friends, and welcome to a long overdue video. At the end of last year, I told myself, Mel, we are going to be serious and we are going to organize the shelves. I could organizar este desastre y empezar de cero. And I did not do it. I didn't reorganize my shelves before 2023 ended. And then the year started. I told myself once more, Melanie Bonita, it's time to organize your shelves. And once more, I didn't do it. And I have by incident turned my second desk into a junk desk. So I quite literally have, I would argue, around 60 books, maybe a little bit less, maybe a little bit over. I'm not quite sure. To my right hand, I have about 20 more books that don't have any place on my shelves either. As it is, without the books that are just sitting on the desk, there's no space on these shelves. So I'm going to have to work some magic today, just play Tetris with this whole thing. The plan for today is to reorganize the shelves. I don't know what I'm aiming for. I feel like if the wheel is not broke, there's no reason to fix it. I I quite like the organization system I have got going on at the moment. My shelves are arranged by genre and then by age group, so you'll see it's adult fantasy, adult fantasy, YA fantasy, you have got romance, literary fiction, slash historical fiction, then you have got more romance, you've got your thriller horror section. So everything makes sense shelf placement wise, so I don't know that I want to switch it up because I love the way that my bookshelves look. I feel like I always know where to reach if I'm looking for something very specific, so I don't have to worry about like, where's this book? I can't find it. Everything's pretty visible to me. So as far as the system, I don't think that's going to change. Make everything fit. That is the goal for the day. Welcome to my bookshelf reorganization for the beginning of year, for 2024. But before we get into the nitty gritty of reorganizing the bookshelves and doing the whole nine yards, let's talk about the sponsor for today's video, Surfshark VPN. I've worked with Surfshark before, so you guys may be familiar with them. But if you don't know what a VPN stands for, it is a virtual private network. And it is the the perfect tool to keep your online identity safe by encrypting all of your information and data to protect you from cyber criminals and big companies that want all of your information. I always say it, but the notion is absolutely terrifying to me. So I absolutely love that there are things like Surfshark VPN to make sure that you are safe and that all of that information that's being sent from your device out to the internet stays between you and the internet and it doesn't get anywhere else. If you're like me and you're mobile with your work, or even if you just like going to different cafes and restaurants, restaurants, connecting to public Wi-Fi, really anywhere, a VPN is for sure going to become your best friend to make sure that by switching your IP address to a new one, it unlinks your identity from your city, your country, and your download history, which is honestly fantastic. Other really common uses for VPNs, which I personally use all the time, is to switch your location for a new one, and that way you get to unlock different catalogs from different countries in your streaming services and find that thing that you are looking for that you get to watch it. So I'll be leaving my link at the top of the description so that you guys can go check out Surfshark so that you can sign up and try a VPN for yourself and see everything that it has to offer. The coolest thing is that Surfshark is being especially cool this month and if you use my code MEL you can get up to an additional six months for free on their service. Not to mention that they have got a 30 day money back guarantee in case you don't like it because that's how confident they are that you are going to like it. Don't miss out. I will be leaving it linked at the top of the description and we can get right into organizing the bookshelves. One small errand later and we have got a chai latte and some empanadas so this is bound to be a cozy yummy time as we reorganize the shelves let me show you what we're currently dealing with it's quite a lot i'm honestly a bit overwhelmed and stumped on what to do because i always have the difficulty of space vin literally is just peeking right here you can see her on top of my desk chair just because she heard the bags for the food and she for some reason is like super attracted to the smell of empanadas she like quite loves it me too. She knows the good stuff. Anyways, I always struggle with space because at the moment my office is at full capacity. So this is the space I'm dealing with. Corner number one is this. We have got one too many books in this corner. We have got quite literally five stacks of books to allocate on the shelves. And then we have got these books right here, which some of them do have a spot, some of them don't. And then on top of that, because I forgot about this, do you see that? More books. These are the books I bought in London. Still doesn't have a space on the shelves. <laughs> oh no. So if you didn't already guess it, there are one too many books to take care of. I don't know that I have enough space for all of them, but we are for sure going to try. So what I typically do when I am reorganizing my shelves in this capacity, which is an outrageous capacity, I recognize, I just start sorting the books through genre and age group because that makes it a bit easier for me to tell where exactly I need to fit in these books. And then it becomes a bit easier to know and understand how exactly I need to rearrange 
each shelf, especially because I'm not looking to reorganize the entire thing, but rather just fit in what it is that needs to fit in. So let's start sorting through the books and just making sure to kind of put them around the areas that they would fit in. When I start reorganizing the shelves also, if I see anything that I need to take out, also known as a book that I didn't enjoy, a book that I'm no longer meaning to read, or a duplicate edition, because I do have some of those, I will just pull them out of the shelves and there will be a follow-up video to this one, which will be a book on haul full of all the books I'm getting rid of, which I will be donating. Let's go. happened since I started recording the b-roll. I have counted every book that needs to be put into the shelves and it is a whopping total of 110 books which is quite a bit and that is a mix of things that I received, purchased, and then books that I took off the shelves that I never put back in after I read them or after I talked about them in a video. So 110 books to fit in but the advantage is, <laughs> please hold, the advantage is that this is the on haul pile and we are at a total total of 80 something books for the on haul which is crazy and this is a mix of books that I read I didn't enjoy books that I DNF'd books that I've got repeated copies of books that I watched the movie or TV show of and I no longer have an interest in reading the book yes that is a category and then books that I have lost interest in over time and I simply don't want to read anymore and so this is quite a bit quite a lot but we have got loads of books to on haul and honestly quite happy with the pile. I know the on haul pile looks excessive and I always feel really bad about on hauling books because I feel like I am giving up a part of my soul almost like it feels like so weird to say that but it really does feel like I'm letting go of something really you know very significant and very important. There's no purpose in these books being in the shelves so stay tuned for the on haul. I don't know how in the world I'm going to talk about all these books in a single video because let me tell you something if there's something I hate or something that drives me crazy is talking about like more than 20 books in a video. I just, it's because I'm so long-winded that by the time I sit down to edit, I have no willpower to do so because I know it's going to be longer than it needs to be. So a little bit of a struggle, but now it's time for me to figure out how I'm going to sort all of these books into the shelves. And just so that you guys see, I have got all of the romance books on this side. So this right here is all romance. And then over here, I literally just have two classics. Here we have got all of the YA books. These are thrillers, you know, contemporary romance books, but YA non-fantasy right here. Then all of these are adult fantasies. Down here, I have got YA fantasies. I'm not sure if this is YA or adult, but I'm gonna have to look it up in a second to figure that one out. Down there, <laughs> in a very poor show of what's going on at the moment, are the book of the month books that I need to put into the shelves. Uh, this side, thrillers, we have got adult fantasy, adult fantasy. Over here, I have got nonfiction and poetry. So that's the current division we've got going on. And then the only two books that I'm not going to put into my shelf that I'm probably going to store somewhere else are these relics. So this is the Babel R from RF Kuang. And then this is the Adi LaRue R from V.E. Schwab that are two of my most prized possessions. And so I, because I have copies of both of these books, actually I have three copies of Babel, which is probably excessive. I have a copy of Adi LaRue in the shelves, two copies of Babel in the shelves. So these don't need to go in here. Those are the only two books from the pile I've got going that I am not going to put 
into the shelves. All this is basically a shelf in and of itself. Same with romance, like this situation is already a shelf. And so I don't know how I'm going to stack these things in a way that makes sense. I am a bit concerned about this, but we'll figure it out, friends. If, if there's anything we are is resourceful and smart, so I'm sure I'll find a way to make everything fit. I'm going to start trying to rearrange things and see how we go. I feel like I don't know where to start and I feel like that's my biggest problem right now. I'm like so overwhelmed with the prospect of what to do that I'm like paralyzed. I'm like a bunny. <laughs> I'm like, what do I do? Probably the smartest thing is to maybe start with a shelf that doesn't have that many books to put in. So maybe lit fic and go from there. The YA section is gonna be a mess because let me tell you, the space that I have for YA is this shelf right here and then the one that's after. And I just have two and they're already full. So I don't know how I'm going to fit in that many YA books in there. I genuinely really don't. So I'm going to have to pull some magic, maybe start mixing the YA fantasies with the non-fantasies. Honestly, all this would be solved if I had an extra shelf and I don't. progress made so far is really good. I only have two different, well, three different, no, four. See, anytime I, I think I'm nearly done, I remember all the things I still have to shelf, but I really am nearly done. I just have the adult fantasies to take care of. My one problem with graphic novels is that I don't have enough space for them. I have two shelves, like two mini shelves full of graphic novels, and that is not enough space for them, which is sad. So I may just have to store those right on top of the shelves like at the top of it it's not even a shelf but like the top of it because that's where I have my heart stoppers all the way to the corner and all of those minus mimosa are red so all of those can go up there with no problem these are all non-fiction poetry memoirs and I don't have a space for this either honestly speaking I never know where to put these on my shelves either because I don't have a lot of them so it's not like I need a full shelf for these because it's such a tiny selection. So what I think I'm gonna do is also store these at the top, but I'm gonna have to go through the top. I was talking about this to my patrons just now because I'm sprinting, by the way. I am filming every time now as I sprint because it's a great bout of multitasking, so you can barely see the sprints over there, but just trust that they are happening because we sprint every Sunday. I was talking to them about how I feel bad that in these videos I'm not really doing anything particularly revolutionary when it comes to the reorganization but honestly, I think the system I figured out is like infallible. Like I really do think it is as close to perfect as a system can get. I absolutely love it. More than anything, I just really love how if I get a new book, I know where it goes. I just have to rearrange a couple things, but it's easy to fit it in to the shelves. And also if I'm reaching for something, I know where to look. Because before what I used to do is that I just used to mix and match everything. I didn't care the genre or the age group, everything was just tossed in. And I also 
quite like that because it gives it a more kind of organic library feel but this though I think especially for when I'm filming videos it's much more efficient and practical and honestly that's the vibe I'm going for I just have to I'm on automatic mode <laughs> I just need to know when I'm reaching for things I'm sorry I guess that I'm not bringing you like a revolutionary <laughs> bice up of the shelves but this is just what it is like I, I do think it's perfect in my eyes it's perfect so I'm gonna keep going with this I think we broke the code friends I think we really really did with this one not gonna lie though I did have the thought and I had to fight it off because listen I'm known to do things just because and I didn't want to really mess this up but I did have the thought of what happens if I start organizing my books by height again because I love the way that that looks for other people I'm like damn it looks so pretty it looks so even and I know that it's not being in height order really bothers some people <laughs> but I'm the one staring at my shelves all day every day so it just matters what I think right but I did think about it because I again really do love the way that it looks by height for me just because of the amount of books there are here because there's over 800 books in this household that I would probably go crazy when trying to organize books as they come in because I'd have to plan by height and it's just very impractical so for as much as I'd love to do something like that I don't know that that's my vibe I just don't know that that's my vibe anymore I used to do that for like the longest time but honestly I think for my own sanity it's not the best decision to make these days so I think I'm just gonna keep what we've got going on right now also just have to say there's something like very very specially healing. I know it's like a, a random word to use, but I think there's something very healing about rearranging the shelves and seeing what I do own. And it's giving me ideas for not only future TBR videos, but for videos in general. So I always love a good bookshelf refresh because it's good for the brain. It's like a good reminder of you own all these things, baby girl, <laughs> and you still haven't read them. So I love doing this, honestly routinely. I try and do it every six months. I think last year I organized my shelves in May, so it's a little bit over six months at this point, but I do think it's serving its purpose to make me excited more so about the things that I already own because you guys already know that a huge goal of mine in recent years has been to really read from the pile of books that I already have here because it's not like we have a shortage of unread books because most of these books, <laughs> surprise, surprise, are unread so it's not like I'm gonna have any issues picking anything out in the near future this shelf is saying pretty much the same it genuinely does feel like a library I'm saying that and I've never <laughs> worked at a library but I will assume that's what it feels like I was meaning to do this for the longest time and I'm just so happy with how this looks now. It's all tidy. I do have now four more piles of books, but it's books to on haul. And I am sure that once I take these to the donation center, it will distribute into the right hand so that people are able to enjoy these books, potentially fall in love with them. And I love doing that. You know, if I didn't love a book, if I have lost interest in a book, I just go and donate them. You know, I think that it's great, especially in Panama where books are so expensive and a lot of the time there aren't books in English so the books that are sold in the bookstore it's just a very different selection to what you typically find in a very well stocked bookstore but I do know that people look for them because it's been a qualm for years and years and I've talked to fellow readers about it so I love that I have the opportunity to donate these books and potentially make somebody else's day brighter by getting a book that they may be interested in that they've been seeing
seeing on Goodreads or online or that they've just heard about from a friend. Hopefully, again, these books will make their way into some really, really good hands. And the shelves look beautiful. I love the way they turned out. I love, again, just giving my shelves a refresh. Makes me so excited to read and to pick up different books that I completely forgot I owned because after a while of just like staring at the way that the shelves look, you kind of become desensitized to them and you're like, it's just all the same. And now I can use my second desk to build a reading journaling nook in my bedroom because the second desk was the one I had over when I lived with my mother two years ago. She was gonna take it because I was like, just have it, take it. Just, you know, just take it off my hands. And it's been two years and Miss Ma'am hasn't picked up the damn desk. I've been telling her for two years to come pick it up. It's not like she's never come over. She comes over at least once a week and still to this day, the desk is still here. So I'm gonna take that as a sign and I'm gonna use it to my advantage. So I'm gonna try and build a nice reading journaling corner in my bedroom and for it I needed to put all of the books in the shelves so I'm so happy about this. So that's it friends that was me reorganizing the shelves. I think the end product looks amazing. I love that I can still work with the system I've got and that I know where everything is. It's just my preferred method. <laughs> Again if the wheel is not broke why fix it in the first place? So I love this so much. Thank you for coming on this journey with me. If you enjoyed this video give it a massive thumbs up down below. Let a girl know, have you rearranged your bookshelves recently? Do you do anything special with them? Do you do height order? Do you do mix and match? Do you do the whole rainbow sequence? Like what is your preferred way to organize your shelves? Are there any books you spotted in this video that you think I should read? Like I mentioned, there are tons of unread books here because I just, you know, haven't gotten to all of them. And so if you spotted anything that you're like, Mel, you must, you have to. Do you let a girl know down in the comments because maybe there's something that I'm not, you know, pinpointing right away that may be worth my time and that I may end up loving. So do let her all know all of that in the comments. If you reach the end of the video, let's leave the single person standing emoji, just the one like rigidly standing. Let's leave that emoji if you reach the very end of the video. The most random choice, but do leave that if you reach this point on. And don't forget to subscribe down below if you haven't done so already for more content like this. And if you want to support the channel further, join us on the Sunday Sprints and just have a lot of fun with a community of fellow minded people. Patreon is always linked down below in case you want to support the channel further. It's immense help to keep this thing running and to connect with you guys more closely. So that is always linked down below for a ton of other benefits that you're not going to see anywhere else. Love you all so much and I shall see you in the next one. Bye!